Hello everyone. Welcome to the third webinar of Amazon Summer Hackathon Season 2. Topic of this webinar is uh, getting started with AWS. My name is Prakash. I'm a co-founder at Skillenza. In the previous webinars, Subendu has already covered a lot about the summit, hackathon objectives, themes. I will quickly touch upon those and move ahead. You can always access the old webinar recordings on the hackathon page. Okay, let me talk a little bit about uh, Sambhav Conference. This hackathon is part of the annual Amazon Sambhav Conference, which is held virtually again this year with a broad theme, Pragati, which means progress. Focus of this conference is around startup enablement, small business digitization, exports, innovation, skilling, and job creation. What is Amazon Sambhav Hackathon? Objective of this hackathon is to build for India. Amazon Sambhav Hackathon, as the name says, Sambhav means possible. And they are providing a platform for all the participants to build innovative solutions for India or Bharat. To talk about the webinar, we have uh, a wonderful speaker here, Shubham Tiwari. He will give insights about how you can utilize AWS. Shubham is a solution architect for CSC segment at Amazon. His insights would be very helpful for participants while they plan to use different AWS features. A uh, little bit about Shubham. When, uh, as he says, when he is not working, you can find him on road with his bike, with his bike, trying to know different people, taste different cuisine. He's a great game enthusiast and uh, find him watching and playing any of those in free times. I would not take much of your time further and I'll invite Shubham so that he can help us get started with AWS. Please do not hesitate to post your comments, questions in comment section. We will take them at the end of the webinar. Welcome Shubham. Uh, hi Prakash. Hello everybody. So it's a great uh, to it. Thank you everybody for thank you Prakash for inviting me here. So it will be good to talk about AWS and everything. So today we'll we are going to talk about uh, how to get started with AWS. So before starting uh, this, I would just like to have a quick recap about what exactly is cloud computing and what exactly is Amazon Web Services. So uh, basically cloud computing is on demand delivery of IT resources uh, through the internet with pay as you go pricing. Uh, this may seem a very, uh, very complex statement at first. So I would just like to simplify it for you. Uh, for example, if you're trying to create, if you're trying to create a website or an application in a non cloud environment, what will happen? Uh, you are going, to, uh, for example, you are, you are trying to uh, create an IES website. So you will go ahead and purchase on a uh, purchase a Windows server. You go, you're going to purchase an SQL server storage devices and a lot of networking components to manage those, uh, uh, those ecosystem for you. Now, as part of this, uh, now, now as part of this process, uh, what will happen? Uh, what will happen is that you, you need, you will have a lot of operational, uh, operational overheads. You do uh, you will waste a lot of time and cost there. Of, by maintaining your servers, your storage devices, and other IT resources. Uh, not just in this sense, it's it will not be a scalable solution as well. Uh, scalable in sense means, for example, the other the kind of website you're trying to build uh, is an e-commerce website. Now, what happens? Uh, what what happened? You you are you're just experiencing around one lakh or two lakh hits per day on your website, and it's work, working perfectly fine as per your environment. Suddenly, what happened? You go ahead and launch a sale on your website, and and on the on the sale day, you go you experience uh, around ten to twenty lakhs hits per day. What will happen now? You now your whole ecosystem that consists of your servers, your storage devices, your databases cannot handle that load because it is just provisioned to handle around three lakhs or four lakhs requests per day. 
now your users who are trying to come for the sale opportunity on the website will go ahead and lose uh, will not be able to access your website only what will happen at the end of the day the user experience is getting deteriorated so that's a major problem for you rather than on a sale day you are you you you, you are getting the new users are feeling that the interface is not fine the website is not working this is a part of a, a problem if if by chance you are aware of this situation you go ahead and provision more servers there you go ahead and add more servers for example if you if you currently if there if currently you had six servers you'll go ahead and add around uh, maybe three four servers more uh, more storage devices more databases and everything worked perfectly fine as as far as sales is concerned the users were pretty happy now what happened after the sale now you have a huge ecosystem of resources that was that is able to handle around 10 to 20 lakhs uh, requests per day but after the sale the your traffic on your website dipped down it came down to around 4 to 5 lakhs or something like that again now the resources that were provisioned as part of the sales process is now wasted now you 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 have purchased those resources but you can't use it now because because that is something uh, that will just add in the operational overhead to you that would just uh, add a lot of uh, a lot of maintenance time maintenance cost and mainly you will lose your your, your it resources they are trying to manage your uh, manage your, those servers rather than spending your it resources on trying to innovate your uh, product or your application there that's an important factor there so you're losing that scalability you're not getting that scalability okay when there's a, dem a sp spike in the demand the servers or the other resources spiked up when the, the the demand dips down everything dips down on its own so that was a factor that that you're not getting in a non cloud environment or a kind of environment that been uh, that we usually know uh, tell us on premise environment where everything is managed by uh, you then came the concept of cloud computing where you do not need to manage anything on its own that is being managed by cloud provider for you you just need to use the resources with pay as you go pricing now what exactly is pay as you go pricing uh, so you just pay for the amount of resources you use and for amount of time you use for example if you are using a, a server for 2 hours you'll just pay for 2 hours nothing more than that nothing less than for that so that's that's a perfect uh, scenario for you so you you are just so you are paying for what you are using and you are not spending anything on on managing your servers or on an operational task everything is done by a cloud provider for you for example if i take so what exactly is aws here so aws is a cloud provider that helps you provide a uh, agile scalable what you can uh, re re resilient highly available solution there so uh, the similar uh, e-commerce website e-commerce ias website that we were discussing earlier now if you want to host that on uh, aws what you need to do you just need to put few uh, clicks on the console and you can get the get windows server sql server and you can just put your code there and it will start running no need to worry about how how will i manage my resources how will i manage my networking components how will i manage my servers everything is managed by cloud provider for you you just need to you just need to work on your code you just need to work on a dotnet code and everything that's being part of that and now uh, and and your product nothing else apart from that so it's so simple to use so cloud computing just simplifies this process for you and just gives you an a little edge there so so that that's about this and uh, aws has got a lot of services uh, which will help you in not just an application development or website development but it will also help you a lot about uh, a lot uh, a lot about the other sectors or or uh, other subdivisions there so as the slide says the broad and deep functionality of aws this basically tells you that uh, how aws uh, the, how the overview of the aws services looks like uh, for example it 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 shows that you have got the core services so what this core services are basically these core services are the servers which we are discussing earlier the database services the storage and the security and com uh, then comes the security and compliance services so when you are creating a solution or when you are trying to create a website or application the major component that always rings your head is that would my solution be a secure solution would it be a uh, would it be sql injected or, or will be i get a ddos attack on it so there are functionalities that aws provide to secure your application and restrict the access to it so that's that that's the kind of tools that helps you in security and compliance uh this is a, just a basic overview slide the next slide has a deeper functionality and 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 a more uh, uh broad base to it so this is just to show you the how the little overview it looks like just to uh make it quite simpler for you uh prakash i'll i'll just explain then we can shift to the slide so 
so as this slide show as this slide shows basically uh, you have got uh, you have got analytics uh, so you uh, then then after this basic services uh, uh, consisting of core services security and compliance and management tools that is used for managing your application websites and other solutions you have got number of uh, sub uh, sub services now what exactly is this sub services so aws has divided the larger set of services into small subsets for the ease of customer use for example if you wanted to create a solution that is mostly uh, leaned towards analytics you can go ahead and use the analytic ecosystem of aws if you're trying to create an ml leaned solution you can go for uh, ml solutions of aws so if you wanted to use a plug and play solution that's mostly created using devops you can go ahead and use a uh, user devops solutions of aws if it's uh, if you want to create an application uh, or you wanted to create a solution that's mostly to, uh, uh, related to internet service you can go go ahead and use the iot solutions there so that's how the functionality is divided so when you are creating your project when you are creating your solutions you need to always keep in mind and you need to always look what exactly your solution is leaned towards and what exactly you are uh, uh, you are making when you are formulating any idea you just need to uh, just thread it out and see that okay my solution i am creating a website that is basically visualizing uh, the data and visualizing the uh, uh, the uh, the data or the information there i i need to have a visualization solution for it so i can go for analytics okay I, i need to create a solution that is basically ml so i i can go, use the ml algorithms there ml tools there to use that uh, you to create that ml uh, ecosystem so so when you're creating anything you just need to be properly sure about what exactly your solution is and what uh, what your service because you have got, when you're entering into aws you're into a large chunk of services you need to be quite clear about what what exactly your domain of application development or what exactly your domain of development is and then you need to use the correct set of services uh prakash can you go to the next slide so as as the slide say, say so this is just a and a broader implication of that slide only like you said that we have compute as storage databases and networking as and core services uh this another thing written that is cdn now if i code the similar similar e-commerce website uh, what will happen uh, what exactly cdn is so that similar e-commerce website that's hosted in india for example your website is hosted in india now it's hosted in cloud and everything is working perfectly fine for you now you have some users that sitting in europe or you have some users that sitting in america and that likes your product and li like your items too much and they start using it and they start to order order it what will happen is that since your application is basically hosted on in, in india they will face a, a kind of latency there because the the distance is too much uh, and you know because we uh, we are living in an uh, application age we know that how uh, what kind of uh, and we surrounded by application we know that the major component when trying to access any application we always look for that latent factor we see that okay the application should not be uh, too much latent there because that's the amount that's the user uh, that's the user experience we always feel so what will happen is that somebody accessing your website uh, from an europe will face that latency factor there and that will surely not be a good user experience so for that experience for that situation you don't need to replicate your environment in number of other aws services you can go ahead and use the aws edge services that is basically part of cdn amazon cloud front so now the the person who is accessing your website from europe will not access it directly from uh, in india he will go through the edge locations in europe and and can easily uh, access those website latent free so that's the cdn for you now if you're going if you're creating a solution that's mostly uh, have a data analytics you can go ahead and use the uh, redshift if it's mostly towards big data you can go ahead and use hadoop you can go use spark if you have a real time uh, streaming data out there you can go ahead and use the kinesis the uh for machine learning we have a uh, we have a uh, service called as sage maker so you can you can use sage maker and similarly if you're creating an e-commerce website and you want to trigger a notification for the customer saying that your order is being placed or uh, your order has been dispatched something like that you can go ahead and use the notification services of aws uh, that is sns you can use the email services that is ses or you can use the pinpoint for uh, using anything if you're trying to manage your if if it's a microservice architecture and you're trying to manage everything using api you can go ahead and use api gateway for managing any everything we'll discuss about the api gateway later part of the uh, presentation in much more detail and then again uh, then comes comes the, uh, then comes the containers where you, where you are basically uh, if you're trying to create a microservice architecture you can use the container ecosystem of aws so again the similar uh, similar thing 
when you're creating a, a product a uh, product or solution or an application you just need to uh, look around and see that where what are the services you're going to use in uh, as part of the service and then and then particular dive deep into this and that service and look what functionalities uh, would be helpful for you and how you can use those functionalities uh, as part of your project prakash can you go to the next slide so these are the foundational services uh, basically the compute storage and databases are the foundational services of aws so this forms the base of it so we'll discuss about each of this service in detail uh, prakash can you go to the next slide so uh, the major component which we are discussing the major component is computing on aws so basically computing is very important factor we have got three different options of computing in aws first is amazon ec2 that is that is basically a virtual servers so for example you are trying to create a solution where you need an and server you can always go ahead and use amazon ec2 if you are trying to create a monolithic application that's basically in this needs to be hosted on a server you can go ahead and use amazon ec2 there so it depends on what kind of solution you are going to create and then you can use in a similar aspect if you are trying to create a microservices architecture that is based on containers you can you you need a container management tool because you cannot manage containers on your own Be, because when you are creating an application based out of containers it would have maybe around 50 or 100 containers and you can't manage all containers it's self healing it's it's automatic provisioning it's uh, uh, monitoring and logging on on your own so you need a container management to, uh, tool for that so uh, amazon as a whole offers two container management tools uh, tools that is amazon ecs that is elastic container service uh, and elastic kubernetes service so if you wanted a simple container management tool you can go ahead and use amazon ecs that's basically created by amazon only and if you are very good with kubernetes and you already work with uh, already work with containers and have a good hands on experience with kubernetes you can always go ahead and use eks because it's just the managed form of the open source kubernetes that's available over the internet so uh, so it depends on on what exactly your need is and what you are trying to create we'll discuss fargate after aws lambda so aws lambda is i think the most popular service among the developers developers love this uh, tool as this service uh this is basically the serverless compute option that we have like earlier we discussed that you don't need to manage your physical servers the, that is managed by aws for you but when you when when you provide servers to the uh, servers to anybody an aws provide servers to anybody they they are they are also uh, we have uh, they have a lot of tasks to perform for example patching of servers the configuration management of servers the automatic provisioning of servers the self healing of servers those needs to be managed by ma managed by you with the help of some of the services so now what aws lambda do is that if you are a code developer and you don't want to uh, go into the the deep operational uh, task and ta uh, task of these uh, managing these servers you can go ahead and use aws lambda you can put your code and everything will be managed by aws for you so you can just put your code and you don't need to manage a you need to think about what service running behind it uh, what is uh, i should patch it or not and what is if it fails what will happen everything is done by aws for you you just need to focus on your code uh, and, and apart from that everything will be managed by aws for you uh, for you your website will run everything just with a, a code with you so the, the developers absolutely love this because they don't need to manage anything uh, they just need to focus on their product application or their code and a uh, no operational overheads there prakash can you go to the next slide uh now you have got a number of storage options on aws as well uh basically s3 s3 is a uh, s3 is an object based storage uh, that is available so uh, uh, available and you can use s3 for a lot of a uh, lot of services like s3 can be used for the data analytics s3 can be used for big data analytics s if you're trying to create a static website you can use s3 for that s3 can be used for a backup and a backup purpose as well uh, so th this is the storage option that's available and then there's ebs ebs is elastic block storage that is basically similar to uh, th that that is uh, pretty similar to uh, the hard drives you have uh, for your ec2 uh, for your servers so uh, it's just it, it is so if you assume uh, ec2 instances are your virtual servers or your servers the ebs are the hard drives that's being attached to it so this is the high performance uh, uh, storage devices that's being attached to your ec2 instances or your servers the kind of availability and the, uh, it prov it provides a high performance and scalability and availability there it depends on what kind of uh, what kind of uh, load you are going to experience 
uh, there you can use a similar EBS. For example, if you if if you're, if you're using a kind of a very high provision uh, throughput experience there that you can use the different uh, io ones of ebs if you if it's a general purpose and you can go ahead and use a gp2 and gp3 versions of G ebs uh, like similarly one thing i missed uh, in ec2 is that uh, ec2 also comes up with a number of uh, number of different flavors for example uh, it's it's not just like that ec2 is available for a single flavor for example if you want to have a uh, compute optimized workload running on your uh, servers you can go ahead and use a uh, a special type of uh, ec2 instances that's basically a design for that compute optimized if it's uh, more of a memory op optimized solutions you can go and use a memory optimized instances if basically your instances are going to handle an ml workload uh, we have got the high end uh, processing workloads for uh, for that uh, for the, for your ml workloads if you want to create a game uh, uh, on aws we have got a special gaming processor uh, instances there so it depends ex exactly what what kind of solution or what kind of website or application you are trying to create on web uh, on the an EC2 instances, you'll get a number of different EC2 instances and num uh, which offers a different performance, uh, not just performance, different processor, different level of uh, CPU optimization, different level of memory optimization. Similar thing happens with EBS. So when you are trying to create anything, you just need to keep in uh, keep in mind that uh, what exactly my need is and and what can I ex uh, use before cre before formulating your ideas into your projects. To make sure, uh, make sure you have a middle step of uh, threading your ideas and mapping it to an accurate AWS service, and then to a, a exact feature of that service. Now, uh, what is EFS? EFS is Elastic File System. Uh, Elastic File System. Uh, so it, it's quite similar to EBS, EBS only, but it's how it's different. It can be commonly used. For example, you have a seven EC2 instances. And you wanted to, uh, and and you want, and all wanted to use a similar uh, kind of uh, data that is you stored in a file system. Now, using a redundant EBS volumes in each EC2 EC2 instance would create a lot of redundancy there. So, what will happen is that we'll go ahead and create an elastic file system, and these elastic file systems will be mapped uh, to each. So, each of the EC2 instance can be mapped to each of this file system or this EFS, and then you can use it. At the end of the day, what you are getting is you are just trying you're just removing the redundant, uh, redundancy there so uh, the thing that that was going to be used uh, that was going to be done by seven ebs volume now is being done by a uh, single efs uh, efs there same thing if you if, if your application is trying to access a sim if your if your application is trying to access a single data uh, for analyzing for logging for visualization and you're tr trying to create for uh, everything for a single single ebs volume rather than use an efs where everything could be mapped to the single EFS, and you can use uh, you can use the same data for everything there. Uh, removes the redundancy. So, uh, Prakash, can you go to the next slide? Now, the most important part, uh, or one of the most important part, the databases on AWS. So, when you're creating any application or you're creating any website or solution, databases forms a core of it. So you need to be aware, uh, very much aware about what databases you need and and what is the need of the uh, what 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 exactly is the need there in terms of data and how you're trying to access or query the data. So the offerings we offer uh, the offerings Amazon offer as part of this is uh, Amazon first is the relational database that is Amazon RDS. Now Amazon RDS is a relational database service uh, the open source relational database service like like you'll see. So it's a similar to that. But the Amazon, the Amazon RDS, which which Amazon offers, is a managed service. Now, what does this managed service mean? Is that it? It's again doing doing the same thing, which is which which Amazon is doing quite brilliantly. It's just uh, shedding of your operational duties there. So now the patching of your instances, uh, your uh, hardware provisioning, your self healing, everything is done. Your backup and disaster recovery, everything is done by AWS for you. So now you just need to focus on your application and your database and your uh, and your product. You don't need to worry about uh, the provisioning of database or patching of database that's done by AWS for you. So similarly, now, now what AWS is pushing you into is that you need to just focus on your product, nothing else. Shed off your operational duties to us and we'll take care of that. Now you just need to focus on what exactly your product and idea is not on this operational task rds comes in um, in all in, in five flavors that is uh, mysql it comes in sql server MariaDB. db it comes in uh, oracle database 
and another rds offering that aws provide is amazon aurora so amazon aurora is aws created uh, database service uh, it it offers the the it, it offers the the performance and security of uh, of uh, commercial databases and, and the simplicity of the open source databases so it's a perfect so if you if you wanted to use a database that's perfectly balanced and has a perfect features you could always go ahead and use amazon aurora and if you wanted to if you're using an is website like we were discussing earlier and was and and would be looking for a compatible solution you can go for amazon rds for uh, sql server now uh, let's talk about uh, no sql or non relational database services for example you are looking into a non relational database service uh, where and it's it's not in a sql format aws also offer a lot of options there uh, the best option that you'll get is dynamo db which is a no sql a no sql database uh, based on a key value pair uh, it's fast flexible uh it's scalable it's uh, and it's uh, highly available as well so if you're looking for a database solution that's very fast and flexible you go for dynamo db and there are other other no sql uh, databases also available for example if if you if you're creating an application and you want specifically want a graph database to be used you can go ahead and use amazon neptune if you wanted to use a col columnar no sql database you can go ahead and use amazon cassandra uh if you wanted to use the document type no sql databases uh, absolutely you can go ahead and use uh, uh, uh you can go ahead and use amazon uh, document db now amazon redshift amazon redshift is is a data warehousing solution uh, which which offers a three tier uh, architecture where databases uh, where there are databases and above which there are uh, there are a lot of sql uh, there are a lot of uh, olap transaction that could be done over it and then it is deeply it is easily integrated or deeply integrated with the bi tools either it could be an open source or open source toolings like uh, microsoft bi or the amazon's uh, powerful quick site as a bi tool so it could be used there so for example if i use if i trying to create a solution where every where a data warehousing solution where everything is uh where, where everything is analyzed on its own and you get a visualized solution at the end of the solution you can look for amazon data uh, redshift uh can you go to the next slide uh, prakash so now another important component that is api service comes in picture so when you are creating an an application you need to be very uh, uh, diligent about uh, uh, api services for example if you are creating a microservice ar architecture that's that's how your uh, microservice architecture or that's how the components of software talk to each other so you need to be very diligent about how you, the api services are going to uh, going to work in aws now aws offers an uh, an an and centralized tool that is known as amazon gateway uh, amazon api gateway that is a fully managed service in which which you can use for uh, to create publish monitor Uh, maintain your APIs at any scale. Not just this; it also helps you in 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 putting the throttling limits, in in the in the cost support, and in uh, in monitoring your APIs. So API gateway can be used for uh, for for from uh, can be used as an end from one to all solution for your API. So you don't need to worry about anything. It just acts as a front door for all kind of backend services that's uh, being hosted on your uh, EC2 or on Lambda or on DynamoDB anything. Uh, it could be used with api gateway so api gateway would be a front door you hit an api gateway and it just pushes it to the a back end service that could be hosted anywhere in your application service now since everybody is also moving to graphql apis uh, because it uh, the kind of uh, the flexibility it offers and and kind of uh, Uh, the kind of pace and the speed it offers and the agility it offers uh, due, due, due to it, uh, due to using the multiple database resources so we have got another service for graphql api that is amazon aws appsync that provides you with a scalable and robust uh, graphql interface where you can uh, combine data from multiple sources like you can use it from dynamo db you can use it from lambda you can use it from api services you can use any for so again when you're creating an application or solution or website anything just keep in mind what what your uh, what exactly your need is and then uh, identify the service and then use it can you go to the next slide uh, prakash uh it uh, so this slide just basically uh, walks you through the aws free tier so uh, aws free tier enables you to gain the free hands on experience with most of the aws services uh, there are three offerings in this one is 12 month free one is always free and another is trials 
so 12 months free is that some of the aws services are free for 12 months uh, to a specified amount and then we have got a lot of services which are always free uh, i will we'll, we'll get dive deep into in the next slide so can you go to the next slide prakash Uh, so 12 months free uh, so 12 months free op option basically comes with amazon ec2 for example if you're trying to create an ec2 instance so uh, the t2 and t3 type of ec2 instance either it be a linux or windows you'll get a 750 hours of free usage of those but be specific it should be a t2 or t3 t3 t t dot micro type instance if you're using an amazon s3 for your backup or restore or uh, static web hosting you can use that 5 gb of amazon s3 storage is free and 20,000 get and uh, put requests are also 20,000 get requests and 2,000 put requests are free. And if you're going to use the relational database for your application or website, uh, the similar fund, uh, the similar funder, you got 750 hours of free T2 and T3 dot micro instances for any of the AW, uh, SQL flavor you get uh, uh, RDS flavor you are uh, using the. We discussed about CDN in the first slide. So the, similarly, if you're using, if you're creating a cloud front for your application to make it more global, uh, you will get 50 GB of data transfer out and around two lakh of HTTP and HTTPS request each month free. So you can use this as for for your trial application as well. There are also a lot of options of always free. Uh, you can use Amazon DynamoDB. That's one of the best service for creating an application. You, uh, up to 200 million requests per month are free and you'll get 25 GB of storage also free. And I think the one of, uh, and, and, the, and the best thing is AWS Lambda, which developers love. And it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite free only so it's you will get 1 million free requests per month that is that, that is up to 3.2 million seconds of compute time per month so if you're trying to create an application and you don't want to uh, go, get into operational overheads and you wanted a resource that's easily uh, that's that's flexible that's flexible and you don't have any operational overhead and that's uh, pretty good as well you can always go for aws lambda amazon dynamodb uh, both are perfectly fine for creating an application that's good enough for any situation or any solution. Uh, I will then let Prakash take over from here. He can just talk about the a uh, few of the summer thing there. Prakash, uh, are you there? So I think uh, Prakash is, uh, so, so basically, so, uh, as part of this uh, summer summit, uh, the Sklinja will provide you twenty-five dollars uh, as as part of this process. I think Prakash could add more to this. Thank you, Shubham. I was on mute. Oh, All right. Uh, so thank you, Shubham. Again, uh, uh, small note for everyone: uh, if you haven't still registered, please go on to the link mentioned here, or go on sklinja.com. Uh, you will find the hackathon link. You can register. Uh, as Shubham mentioned, uh, if you require AWS credits, please reach out to Skillenza team. We will help you with the credits. Right now, we will move to Q and A. I'll start picking up questions. You guys can ask the questions, and uh, me and Shubham will be happy to answer. So, Shubham, we have a very interesting question here, um, uh, which I would like to take. Uh, can cloud providers steal my data? Abhishek has asked this question. <laughs> so Abhishek, uh, cloud provider doesn't steal your data. So it it works on a kind of compliance and standards where, and we don't have, AWS do not have access to your data. Your data has been encrypted by a special kind of keys uh and uh, keys which are which are only encrypted by a public and private key architecture where uh, it just encrypts with the kind of key you have so we don't have access to customers data so no cloud provider can steal your data uh don't don't worry on that part and be uh, uh, be free to use the uh, aws or, or any other cloud provider thank you shubham right uh so shraddha has asked uh, asked can we encrypt data on S3? Uh, yeah, you can encrypt your data on S3. So, uh, in, so basically, when you're trying to encrypt data on S3, there are a lot of things. Really, whether you're trying to encrypt data on at rest or you're trying to uh, encrypt data at uh, transit. So, if you're trying to uh, uh, at rest, you have got multiple options as well there. 
so that may be around uh, that may be that you are trying to uh, uh, encrypt your data using customer managed keys that the key keys you have or you can have use amazon managed keys uh, th those are the options if you're trying to ma if you're trying to encrypt your data in transit that is uh, while it's flowing from one one to another you can go ahead and use the the tls encryption there okay thank you shubham so i'll take the next question uh the tinker has asked uh, the impact of aws usage on hackathon judgment uh we would recommend you use aws services as uh, shubham has already mentioned uh the plethora of services available will help you to build a solution based on themes already available for the hackathon shubham anything uh, so else definitely definitely so uh aid it so when you're trying to create a solution for example if you are if you if you're trying to create an application uh that that is impacting something for an application uh, a kind of application that took a fintech application or a marketplace application where somebody can upload something or somebody can take something when you're trying to when you're trying to create it with aws i think you will get a lot of uh, services which are very match which which are very uh accurate there and you will get the, those features in, in on aws which could make your make your make your journey from create from starting your application creation to end of it very easy uh, whether it be an a triggering of notifications whether it being a logging solution whether creating it on serverless so once you get into the aws ecosystem and use it for your hackathon uh, hackathon or any other solutions i think you will absolutely love it the kind of services and the features you'll get in aws that's the best part thank you shubham right so i think we have covered most of the questions here uh, we'll wait a few more minutes to get some questions guys we have already posted a, a link of full documentation for aws services uh, you can access that on facebook feed or youtube feed and for credits uh, it's already mentioned please reach out to support at skillendra.com our team will be able to assist you if you guys have any question uh, feel free to ask if you have any doubts regarding any service or you're trying to you have some idea in mind and you wanted to say that which service would be used feel free to ask anything i would be, i would be happy to answer in best of my efforts uh, if you have any plan and you you are not pretty sure which service would be used there i'll just like to will help you just mark those dots there yeah please do you don't get shubham uh, free every time otherwise he'll be on his bike <laughs> <laughs> yes you can send an email to us shraddha you can send an email to us we'll be happy to uh, provide answers to your queries or connect with shubham later as and when required Sure, sure, absolutely, sure that you can. All right, last minute. We'll wait one more minute for questions. If nothing comes up, we'll wrap up. Any advice you want to give them, uh, Shubham? uh nothing apart from i think i think if you wanted to learn aws and work on it the, the only way you can learn aws is that you can you you need to get your hands dirty in the console you need to uh, go and uh, tell about you need to go ahead and uh, just learn from the documentations and work on the console you need to get your hand, hand dirty there you need to uh, get usage of the free services try to create something out of it work on it uh, just break it and then fix it so th that is only way you learn aws or any other thing there so feel free to use those uh, credits that skillenger is giving you or the free tier uh, services that aws is providing you use it to the fullest learn aws because that's something that's globalizing and that's creating a lot of impact there you are going to see a lot of aws uses in the recent in, in maybe in future so try to work on that nothing apart from that thank you shubham thank you everyone uh, for taking time this evening uh, we wish you all the best and we are looking forward to seeing amazing uh, uh, projects and products being built uh, in this hackathon looking forward to seeing that
have a good evening guys bye bye good evening guys take care bye